Something like this may have happened to you. You've got your iPhone, you crack the screen, you go to get it repaired, and something that should seem like a pretty straightforward fix really isn't that straightforward. It gets a little complicated. You've got to go to an authorized Apple retailer. Maybe it costs a lot more than what you thought it would be, or you have to replace your phone entirely. Now, I just use an example of an iPhone, but as more products come to market that are connected to the internet of things, we've really seen this growing debate of ownership. Do you really own the products that you buy and do you have a right to fix them when they break? This issue is known as right to repair. And you know, there's a lot of money riding on this. You have companies like Apple and even tractor maker John Deere that have a lot of money tied up in being able to control how you repair and fix the products that you buy. So I really wanted to get some more information and insight on this issue and talk about not only how it affects consumers, but also should be something investors keep in mind as well. So I hopped on the line with Aaron Perzanowski. He's a law professor at Case Western University University, and he's also the author of the book, Right to Repair. We talk a lot about the basic concepts of right to repair and why it should matter to investors and consumers. Take a look. Just to start off, Aaron, what is right to repair? So the, the right to repair at its core is really the idea that consumers, when they purchase devices, when they purchase products, ought to have the ability to fix them when and how they want to. I think that's really the essential message. Yeah, and uh, just to kind of expand on that, can you talk about how this plays out in the consumer space? I know Apple is kind of, you know, the thing that comes to top of everyone's mind, uh, you know, trying to get your iPhone fixed can be complicated, but can you just talk a little bit about uh, how this plays out um, with consumers? Sure. So I think the iPhone is the most common example that most consumers think of when they think of the right to repair. Most of us have had the experience where our screen cracks or the battery needs to be replaced and it turns out to be a more complicated and more expensive repair than, than many people might expect. And that same set of concerns really plays out across the consumer economy. So it's not just smartphones, but it's our laptops, it's our kitchen appliances, it can be our cars, it can be million dollar tractors that face these, these same sets of restrictions when it comes to the ability to repair them. Some of the things kind of driving this, because I, I think a lot of it, especially in the tech industry, when we look at companies like Apple and Microsoft, the shift from like product to software as service and the motive here for why some of these big companies would really want to retain control over this area. Yeah, so, you know, the strategy of encouraging consumers to replace products rather than repair them has been around for a long time, right? That's something that we, we've seen in the consumer economy for a century now. I think the thing that has really shifted is, you know, with embedded software in so many devices, that really gives companies a new level of control in terms of restricting the ability to replace components, to rely on independent repair providers. And the economic incentives for device makers, I think are pretty strong here. On the one hand, companies like Apple are in the business of selling 200 million iPhones a year, and they wanna to continue to do that. And once the market is saturated, the, the strategy is to rely on replacements. For other goods that we know are going to be re repaired, like cars, the strategy isn't really to stop people from engaging in repair, but to steer them towards the manufacturers or the dealers uh, authorized repair services so that they can you know, capture as much of that value as possible. I, I know you, you've kind of mentioned this in other interviews, but just to really hammer home, like for investors, like the margins on this like are so good for these companies. So when it comes to the sale of devices like, you know, iPhones and iPads, device makers like Apple have incredibly high profit margins. It's really profitable to sell those products. And, you know, their margins on the sorts of services that companies like Apple are providing are, are consistent considerably lower. The same thing tends to be true in the markets for replacement parts and services. So car makers have incredibly high margins when they're selling uh, replacement parts for collision repairs, for example. Auto dealers make just as much money on service as they do on the sales of vehicles. So there's a lot at stake economically when it comes to control of these repair markets. 
I guess too, like it's not just parts, it's also like access to information of how to fix these parts. Can you talk a little bit about how like copyright and IP are really also playing into this whole issue? Yeah, so the strategies that device makers have relied on to control these repair markets really vary. Sometimes it's about the design of the product, sometimes it's about the pricing structures for repairs, but oftentimes it's a question of intellectual property law. So again, control over the software is a really important mechanism here, but so are things like repair manuals and schematics and other sorts of information that are really essential in the repair process. If you can control that information, uh, you have a much better chance of controlling the market for repair. There's also uh, questions of design patents, trademark protection, all of those types of intellectual property protection give companies a, a different suite of tools to control replacement part markets and other aspects of repair. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. As always, you can hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would like to know, have you ever had a nightmare repair problem, something you thought would be simple and easy to fix and it just wasn't? And let me know your thoughts about this issue. I'm really interested to hear. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.